Big old Paw Paw and Jama Jen. Mama Jen, what do you think of Paw Paw? Have you got that camera on when my hair looks like this? Yeah, that's pretty awful, Mama Jen. That's the worst. <laughs> Uh, Matthew, that is terrible. You don't get a woman when her hair's all over her head and pinned up. And what is wrong with your hair? Well, it hadn't been brushed in a few hours. That's one thing. It's pinned up and it looks thick. I don't think anybody cares. <laughs> well, I do. Yeah. Okay. Well, when you're done caring about your hair, what do you think of Paw Paw? Well, hmm. Hmm. She's got to take something to think about it. He's a pretty good old fella. Pretty good old fella. We've been hanging out for almost 32 years, which... It's a long time. Yeah, it's, uh... Papa uh, said you wouldn't let him go. That you made him, you like, you just made him hang around. He, he couldn't get away from you. What are you talking about, when? Just all this time, you know. You couldn't get away yeah. from you, you just... Mm -hmm. You're not going anywhere, Papa. You're staying with me. Yeah, I think he might have wanted me to go somewhere. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or the other one. Okay, well, why don't you show me the other one then? Let me freak out over this. <laughs> it says it was staying April 24th, and we got it about the 26th, so. We're going out and get that other one to look at it. I don't want to, I'm tired. Oh, let me look. The war that was, I never knew you did. Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead and get started so I guess we'll just start with the easy stuff so what what year were you born what was your birthday January the 24th 1932 and where were you born at Wall County at Wall yes to now remember and your your full your full name Billy Jean Billy Jean McGill McGill and uh, what, what were your parents' names? My mother's name was Audie Evelyn McGill. My daddy's name was Ransom Theodore McGill. And so, all right, and so you were born to them, and, and you had how many siblings? I had one brother that died. He even lived a few hours. Mm -hmm. And I had a sister that died when she was three. What was her name, Bill? Betty Joyce. Betty Joyce. And little brother's little name brother was James? James Earl. James Earl. Who was my brother's name? And then you said you have one more still alive now? Yeah, Jack. Jack. Yeah. And is he older or younger than you? He's just turned 80 last year. 80, so he's younger. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so were you kind of growing up like during World War II? Yeah. Kind of growing up then. What was it What was it like growing up that time when you were a kid? Well, it was kind of, it was good times in a way and bad times. Of course, a little part of the times during the Depression, uh, back in them days, uh, you know, a lot of stuff was hard to get. A lot of stuff was rationed. You had to have... You was only allowed to buy so much gas for your car every week or every month. I don't know how it was. But they issued you coupons. That's what you used to get gas. And if you used all them up before you got your next ones, you were just out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, stuff like sugar, you couldn't get sugar. People used syrup and stuff like that to sweeten stuff with because sugar was rationed, you know, and stuff that was made with sugar, like Coca-Cola, you couldn't get them. And, um, so you were kind of, you know, there when all, everything was happening in the 60s, like, I don't know, was there, I mean, I don't know, was there, was there like a lot of tension that you felt when all the civil rights movement was happening? Oh, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of tension. It was, in fact, it was, a little bit scary at times. Yeah. They meant business over there. They <laughs> still rights so. mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, some of the guys that was in our unit, they, of course, you know, back in them days how it was with blacks. 
Most people didn't like black. Most people didn't. A lot of them, they didn't like it. They didn't like it. They didn't like having to be there again you know, because of it. But I had a dad that taught me as a son, no matter what color his skin is, this is the same God created you, created him. And he said, God don't love you, don't love him, you no more, he does him. And he said that, and that just didn't sit good with a lot of people. When you were in Korea, like, you said you didn't really see any action or anything. Was that right? Like, you guys weren't part of a whole lot over there? Very little. That was our biggest thing. And I, I got sent out on one patrol, and we were told not, not to engage any enemy that you've seen. So be sure to stay clear of them. But they, we had them out. We got all of our instruments, our compasses and things, and they told us. And there you were, they believed they were. He said, if you find them close, mouth them out, come back and report. Don't do nothing else. But evidently they had the same idea, and we did run into a group of them. They began to fire at us, and of course, we fired back at them. And we came in this little, little village that was nobody living in it. Was everybody done been drove out, and, and uh, we were. I know I was dispersed out, moving in slow to make sure. If they wasn't housing anybody, you know. And I don't know, some lunatic soldier in uh, Korea, I don't know, don't know where he come from, why he was in there unless he deserted his outfit. The bunch that he was with, he was patrolling. Evidently, I figured he, and, and I guess he, I don't know, he didn't have a weapon. All he had was a with Bennett. And uh, I was walking along, along the side of a building headed for the door with my rifle. And around the corner real deadly he come out and saw him. And I didn't see him, one of the guys from the buddies yelled at me and hollered my gill. I whirled around with a weapon, and there he was, about as far as he heard that TV there. And of course, as a soldier, your instincts is to fire. And that's what I did. Because I never did know it. I didn't, I didn't even know I fired. Because the bayonet hit me right there before. And I didn't. So I, first thing went through my mind, I said, oh God. He'll kill me. But I got him right there. He was laying on the ground and getting his last breath. And that was a scary moment. So that was a, that was the biggest thing that happened. I mean, you just, those are like the, some of the best years of your life in the Army, like you really Yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, even after I can, and today, I still miss it. You know, just when I went in, I hated it with a passion. And got it in my blood. A lot of them did. And so, yeah, I, I, I still miss it today. You got, so you got to go pretty much It really is great to go there. back and to go be able to listen to Paul Paul talk and tell stories about himself. Job as a clothes, clothes, clothing salesman and all that. I've watched these interviews several times yeah. now, and it makes me realize like how much he experienced and did in the early parts of his life, um, times that we weren't even around and uh, that we didn't even know about. When I got in my old age and retired. And um, it's really cool to see that part of him and see that side of him because we didn't really know him until well over half of his life was gone.
And it's an interesting thought because what was it about us that made him choose us as a family? And what was it about him that made us love him so much? This army man that came into our lives who loved Alabama football and could seemingly build anything. What did he teach us? How did he change our lives? I think that's something that every one of us could ask ourselves every day, all the time.
Mm-hmm. Don't want my bitch mine. Well, just show them. Just show the public how good you sleep. So, how do we describe the life of Bill McGill? He had so many life experiences and traveled all over the world. But I think for our purposes, we'll talk about the part of his life where he accepted us as part of his family. We're fortunate enough to have much of his life documented, and I think we'll start with the earliest video that I can find of him in 1989. Kara, y'all were kind of special to me because you did come there a lot, you know. And uh, Kara, she was a, she was just a sweet youngie. Crystal, bless her heart. Always calling and checking on me. You know, and that's meant a lot. And all of all the family, all of them's been that way. And that means a heck of a lot. Matthew, can you show me your teeth? Show me them pearly whites. Hold your head up. Yeah, the first time I was telling Janet the other night, I said, the first time I seen Matthew, y'all y'all lived in the trailer park over there. Give 
my fish, Papa. I think if we're going to talk about the life of Bill McGill, first and foremost, we have to talk about how he was always there, whether it be playing with the kids, going to graduation, showing up for a birthday party. He was always there. He was dependable that way. And I think it made a really strong impression on all of us. I've got a good CD in there, Christmas music. You, you know all the ones in our family, it's, they're all good. They're all good Christians and love the Lord and been brought up that way and they live it that way. And when you get together, it's all good, clean, fun. And it's always done in that fashion. It's, and thank the Lord for this day with our family. Mm -hmm. So that's it's always 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 enjoyable because I always enjoy all of, our, all of our family, everyone in it. I always enjoy it whenever they come, even if it's just like you come by to visit. I always just love and enjoy you coming by. And yeah, I love them all dead. I couldn't have, I've said it more than one time, I, I couldn't have asked for a better family if I had my own. You know. I couldn't ask for better. Okay, we got a drink. Yes, we are. Oh, yeah. I got a drink. Okay. 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 The second thing you should know about Paw Paul is his relationship to Mama Jen and how quirky and funny they were together and how Mama Jen loved to just aggravate the holy heck out of him anytime she got the chance, especially when it was on video. Good morning, Mr. McGill. Oh, get that, get that line out of the Because I had it. I said good morning, Mr. McGill. I said good morning, Miss Jan. McGill. You did not say that. You said, oh, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing with that light on? I'm pretty sure one of Mama Jen's favorite things was to watch Paw Paw watch football. 
because he would always do this foot thing like he was trying to run down the field with the players. Now, we all know that Pawpaw was a huge Alabama fan, and he watched every game. Sometimes it was hard to tell whether or not he actually enjoyed the games, but he definitely made it entertaining for us, especially when we caught him on camera. And in the 1989 Iron Bowl, there is a moment that is so huge, so unforgettable, that it still lives in our family's legend to this day. What is special about your relationship with Mama Jen? The type woman that deep down in her heart I know she is. If every man had a wife like Jen, there'd be a lot less problems. Hmm. Didn't take me long to know that things just had to get awful bad and I'd have to be really bad for her to leave. Mm -hmm. And she just wasn't going to do it. You can't, you can't ask for much more than that. Mm -hmm. Papa's reading his paper, and Madison's reading her book. Madison, I gotta admit, she was kind of an apple of mine. You know, and I, I don't know why it was about her, it was just something about her. And she's still my little darling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just something about that kid. And, and uh, probably the main thing is, because I spent a lot of time with her. Mm -hmm. We kept her a lot. And I used to take her a lot of places with me. That I didn't know the rest of them. Wait, where is that vermin? I hear a vermin saying, Watch Mama Jan. What is that vermin doing? Boy, that is great. Is that not great? Or is that great or what? One great thing Papa did for us, especially as kids, was building the pool for us. He put it up and built the deck himself, and we spent countless summers swimming together out there. Ha, ha, ha. 
Something that Paul Paul did that meant especially a lot to me was that every year for Christmas, he would always make his Christmas breakfast. Bill, he stayed up too late and putting the stickers on the ninja. Now we don't have biscuits ready. Which one? Where does that go to? Have you, did you get the Batmobile already? Ashley, what'd you get? Oh my gosh. Oh, fingernails. <laughs> Bill, did you drop the doggone bacon yet? Not yet. So one thing he did for us was he allowed the kids and the parents to be together for Christmas morning. While he stayed behind in the kitchen to make sure everybody had breakfast. And he did this Bill year Bill, the break, the traditional Christmas breakfast after year and their breakfast ship. after year. No. Christmas tradition. Bill spends three hours cooking breakfast. And that's just the kind of guy he was. And he never asked for thanks. He never asked for praise or appreciation. Give us Alabama. Give it up, Alabama. He was there for everyone, every day, all the time. And we really took on a new appreciation for that one year when we had to celebrate Christmas without him in 2014. Chris is, Chris is the everybody. That's all we need. This guy. Is. What? Ow. Game Big Daddy. No, it's great. No. Hi, Shay. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Phil. Hey, who's talking over there? We all tend them to blah blahs. I just said to stop having fun. Hey guys, listen. I'm, I'm just going to start off by saying I miss Bill. We all miss Bill. Mm -hmm. When Chris and Gary got married, or was getting married, mm -hmm. I think him and Gary laid up under a trailer one night in the freezing cold and worked on the day of our, day of our wedding. And uh, freezing cold yeah. and worked on stuff. I don't think there's anybody here. I remember. Kim's washer dryer went out one time and she called Bill first thing. He's over there working on it. And uh, and Andrew accidentally, he was little, knocked off a lamp and broke it. And she said, Andrew, you broke my lamp. He said, Pop off fix it. Because <laughs> Pop off could fix anything and we want Pop off fixed. It's a mixed Christmas, it's, but it's Christmas the most important thing that we have to remember. Is that we are all, we're flesh, we're all, we're all messed up, and we all need it to Savior. <coughs> and Jesus came, and that's why we celebrate Christmas. It is about gifts but and family, but he's the greatest gift of all. I'm thankful for my salvation. And uh, I hope Bill gets to come home soon. I'm so happy we're together one more time. 
<clears throat> not that we're dismissing Bill or we're going to remember Bill in a way that uh, we're ready to let him go. But uh, everybody knows, everybody has family, everybody's been there. Um, you know, the way I look at it, everybody wins one way or the other. And whoever gets there first, you know, wins first. But remember when you go visit or your thoughts that, you know, life goes on. Um, there will be, you know, a last day for everyone. We don't know when there's going to come something that changes our life forever. Like going to a wedding and not making it. Like me going down Megan and not making it. Somebody crossing the road and not making it. Things can change out for me if we need to. Love each other at all times. We need to have our hearts right with God. And uh, everything you see here, the floor you stand on from the ceiling to this light, everything from the from the roof, from from the basement on the early days, um, Bill touched and Bill made. This is the front bedroom, which is Nancy's bedroom, which is small. So we have a window over there facing the porch. It's the living room. Goes out onto the front porch, down the hall. This was Aunt Dubby's room. And the reason I mentioned that, it was, Crystal remembers, it's like Mother said, you know, what do you think about this place? Going back to when it was like a shed. A shed. And it had like, port you know, like porters had been here. And still, still live. And where it was like, you know, they were in the house that you're in, and it's like, you know, mother, let's, let's don't do that. Here, well, this looks smaller than it used to. This used to have twin beds in it. This was uh, BJ and David's room. And we have the bathroom that's built on the slant. How big is this room? Supposed to measure it, Bill. Now here's some of these doors that's wide as, whew, wide. And this is the dining room, and I want that little, I want her to let me have that little hutch there, if she will. That little corner hutch. Krista come up the steps with her arms like this. I said, <laughs> Krista, what do you think about the place? It was a dump. It had holes in the floor, and new plumbing, new roof. I mean, new, new uh, electricity, which Gary fixed all that. Krista came up from the basement. She said, I don't want my mother living in a dump. And this is the kitchen. Windows, windows. Hmm. That was a den, kind of, sort of. Right there has got to go. Hmm. Oh, Lord. I pulled up in the driveway the other day to get the mail, and I just looked at the house. Remember when it was black tar paper for so long? <laughs> I thought Bill sided this whole, in his 80s, 80 years old, sided this whole house by himself. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is, in honor of Bill, he lived a sacrificial life. He's an inspiration to everyone. If you think about it, um, <laughs> you know he's quirky and he's got some things, and he's a big Alabama fan, and everybody knows the things that we laugh at. But uh, he made a dream come true for my mom, which is very special to me. He turned a dump into a very nice home. Tell us say something about that. Okay, go ahead. Um, I usually don't talk much, but um, I just wanted to say, you know, I've spent you know, a lot of time with Dad this week, and I guess really the thing that touches me more than anything was 
was in it three years old, I knew already that he was my daddy. He was my only daddy. He took care of me. He didn't have to. He's helped take care of my boys. He didn't have to. So was my mom. So I am very thankful that I had a man to step in my mother's life and to be a, a daddy to me. And I'm very thankful and very grateful for him. And we're going to remember him and, and his legacy. He was a hard worker. Um, there were some days Gary remembers, other people remember that it was it was tough. He was a big part of it. But uh, remember Bill every day in your prayers. And uh, make sure with everybody here that you look around and go, you know what? I don't know if this is my day or your day, but your day will come. And remember not to take everybody for granted and to, uh, to say what you want to say to people. So there's not regrets in that kind of thing. It's just an amazing thing to think about our relationship with Papa in this way. How we all came together to remodel this house. It wasn't about just making breakfast or building pools or houses. But together with him as our family, we literally built a home. Love and what I guess I, did, I didn't mean to ask that like you know kind of how are, how are you right now health wise what's going on with you well this health problem I'm in now it's 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 hard to deal with especially someone like me I I've never been one to sit still never been one to not be doing something, not get out and doing something, finding something to do. And I, I can't do it anymore. And it's it's really hard to deal to. In fact, uh, here a few days ago, again, I'll tell you, it, it, uh, it finally rose to the point till I broke down. Because I just thought like this can't take this anymore. I can't take living like this. It's just, it's too hard. I can't do it. But, uh, Jan was there to call for me. Boy, since I've been in the condition I am now, she's been right there. Looking after me, taking care of me. It's meant a heck of a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Like, does it scare you at all where you're at? Uh, I, mean, I don't know exactly how you mean that, but, uh, no. Uh, afraid of dying? No. Don't bother me. I, I'm not a perfect person, never will be, and none of us ever will be. But I do the best I do, and I lose it like others does. I do things and say things I shouldn't. 
but as as far as uh, it bothered me, other than what it does to me physically, no bother. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm 83 years old. Hey, I went through five bypasses 25 years ago. I can't complain. The Lord's been good to me. Can't complain. I agree. I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you think your, your legacy, you know, one day, I mean, hopefully it'll be 20 years from now, but we just never know, but one day, what do you think your legacy will be that you leave behind? Well, I hope to say that I was brought up right. I tried to live the right kind of life. I always worked hard all my life and tried to provide for my family like you should, like everybody should. And I think I did as good a job as I could possibly do. So I have no regrets there. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. So where do we go from now? What did we learn from the life of Bill McGill? What does his legacy mean to us today? Maybe it's something to appreciate, like his outlook on life or his work effort. Maybe it was cooking his food or working on projects. Maybe it was just as simple as being reliable. Or maybe it meant a little bit more. Maybe it's his memory, the memory of something good in our lives. Maybe it was his sacrifice, his constant presence around everyone, every day, all the time. Maybe it meant love. Maybe we can learn something from that. Because if this man came into our lives and loved us unconditionally, how much more should we love each other? Maybe that is something worth remembering. Bill at Jan's home was a, was a lively little place, but Bill McGill would have never changed one thing about his life, about his wife, about his family, about his children and grandchildren. He had what he wanted. He's just passed this way one time. Now, and he, won't be, he won't be coming this way again. Many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one that is truly reliable? If you look up the word dictionary in the dictionary reliable, you're going to find a picture of Bill McGill. He was truly a reliable man. You can count on him. So 
we just want to thank, thank Bill for his contribution in life, in our life. Thankful that he knew the Lord and he went on to the other side. going to carry his torch and talk about him and, and reminisce and laugh and we just thank you so much for the blessing of uh, he and Remember Jan's home. Bill every day in your prayers and uh, make sure with everybody here that you look around and go you know what I don't know if this is my day or your day but your day will come. And remember not to take everybody for granted and to, uh, to say what you want to say to people while there's still time. You know, so there's not regrets and that kind of thing. Just wanted to come out here and sit where the pool used to be, uh, the pool that Papa and Mama Jen uh, had for us. Uh, Papa built with his own hands and made the deck, and um, just had so many good memories out here with. Kara and with Shayla and with Mama Jen and Papa and with my parents and with everyone uh, just swimming in the pool and having a good time. Um, I think we all had good memories out here um, that we shared with each other and uh, you know I think that's the great thing about Papa is that you know he didn't just build a pool for us he didn't just build a house he built a home. Uh, we, we had a home with Papa and um, you know those are things that we just uh, I think are very important to remember. I think that's something we can remember him for is the things that he did for us and um, always being reliable, always being there. Anytime there was a birthday, anytime that um, we were there for Christmas, him making breakfast for us, um, we can always count on Papa to be there. And I think that's something that's worth remembering. Um, you know, just like being in a place like this of um, where we had good memories, where we spent time together as a family and something that Papa built for us now it's all gone. Yeah, uh, how do you how do you think you have impacted all of our lives, you know, since you've been with Mom and Jim? Well, I hope it's been good. And and, and you know, uh, being around all of you uh, quite a bit because this is a close family. Spend a lot of time together, and. Uh, I, I, I can't I can't find any any regrets at all in that in that line mm -hmm. because to me you all mean so much to me I don't think no parent could care for and love their children and their grandchildren. And finally, for this last part of the video, I wanted to 
dedicate to all of you in remembrance of Paul Paul uh, because we all remember the great things that he did for us. And I want to challenge every one of you to go out there and be remembered for something that you've done, uh, be remembered by someone. Um, we've all got something, uh, something that we need to pursue, someone that we need to have a relationship with. Go out there and fight for it. Go fight for that person. Go fight for that good thing in your life and make something good in their life. Um, and I want to encourage everyone to do that because we all remember how we were affected by Paul Paul. And I think that we need to go out there and remember that and affect other people um, if we just put our minds to it. So I want to encourage everyone to do that. Remember the good things in your life and make sure that you make a good memory for someone else. We can do it if we try every day, everyone, all the time. I just want everybody to know I appreciate you all mm -hmm. and I love every one of you. Yes. Love you, Papa. Love you. Papa Bell. I want everybody to look around and see who's here and because we may not all be like this. You never know from year to year who's going to be missing. And it's by the grace of God and mercy of God that we have, that we're here. Not having any kids of my own, I just, because we're attached to them now, they seem like they are my own. That's the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. All my own. And um, I guess kind of let you have the last word. Is there anything that you'd like to say about yourself and that you'd like to say to the family? Well, I just to, to say to the family, 
going to be on to death. And, uh, I'm, uh, don't, you know, kind of bothers me that my condition now, you know, I, I know that's hard on Mama Jan. And, and I know the kids, you know, they feel a lot like that too. And, uh, but, uh, as far as uh, anything else, I'm glad that I've been here for them as much as I could and, and try to do the best that I could and hope that I accomplished something in that line. I see you have. All right, well, I think I'm done. All right. <laughs>